I see in the near future that pride parades will have displays of sex acts in the streets on stages. This will occur today somewhere and will spread throughout the countries that have been defiled by the LGBT. There will be no restraint for perverseness to be openly displayed. There will be no restraint and that will happen this month going forward so that it will be very clear who is for this debauchery, who is entertained by it, who performs in it, and the little children, the parents that endorse it. This will divide those from the very few that are preserved from evil. And those are the saints. Those who, who have been washed by the blood of Christ and dwell in his secret place that have been removed from the wilderness of this debauchery, excuse me, moved into a wilderness from the debauchery of the dragon vomiting out this filthy, abominable perverseness manifest before our very eyes. And the reason why we, the saints, are brought out from this flood is so that we would not be like Sodom and like unto Gomorrah. It is only the grace of God that keeps us from being swallowed up by the puke of the dragon. The abominable filth. And yet we will see the world going after the beast to receive its mark of debauchery. And they will worship the beast with both hands as they become possessed by demons. No restraint of evil. There will be no law in the land that has any power. The world of iniquity will be fulfilled in the debauchery in the streets and the violence shall increase and there will be no remorse in those who commit the crimes and during this time which is at the door the two prophets shall arise out of strange places and they will be clothed with sackcloth and ashes symbolizing their afflictions they will be brought down to such humility and they will be bearing the cross of their afflictions in such an extent that they will be able to prophesy 1,260 days, I believe it is, every day. And they will prophesy the end of the world is at hand. And they will be mocked and they will be derided. But the power of the anointing on these two prophets, which are called the two witnesses, that Jesus will send forth, will be unstoppable. 
there will be many attempts to have them killed, to have them entrapped. But no man will be able to hurt them until the end of their prophesying, which, by the way, the churches will deny. They will curse these prophets as false prophets. The churches will continue to grow like a cancer and the hypocrites will continue to tread on the blood of Christ while these two witnesses will go forth into all the world condemning it and its evil. And after their prophecies are fulfilled and completed, the beast shall rise and kill them, and they shall lie three and a half days dead, their bodies dead, in the streets of Jerusalem, which is spiritually the very center of the earth, where the seat of Satan is. And they will lie in the streets and not be buried taken away in any respectful way and then a voice from heaven will be heard as an earthquake shakes the land and it will call the prophets to come up and ascend into heaven and the people that remain from the earthquake that survive it will give glory to God as they see the ascension of the prophets by the Spirit of Christ go into heaven sitting together with Jesus in heavenly places and then we're gonna have Armageddon the rage will be great we see it now but it'll be much greater iniquity will bound into no man's territory there would be no nothing before has ever been this bad we will see those of us who are left behind that remain the rapture will not take place until the end of time there's no rescue there so those of us who endure to the end shall be saved the endurance is rejecting evil rejecting worldly lust and ungodliness, living sober and holy as we look for the blessed hope, the glorious return of the great God, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We look unto him who is invisible. He is the author and finisher of our faith, and we're not finished yet. We're still here and we are strengthening the things that remain. That is, the things that remain in our lives. The Word of God we must keep studying and meditating on the Word. Blessed is the man that meditates day and night in the law of the Lord, and in the law of the Lord does he meditate. He does not sit by the seat, in the seat of the scornful. He does not walk according to the ungodly, in their ungodly counsel. His tree bears fruit, and his leaves do not wither, because he is established by the river of God which is the ever flow of his spirit like a wellspring inside coming out manifest in our testimony speaking the words of life I would like to encourage you to strengthen the things that remain increase your time in prayer and in the Word of God break off any idols, break off from any relationships that are 
sinful, unholy? What fellowship has light with darkness? What concord has Christ with Belial? Touch not the unclean thing, lest we be a partaker of their sins and receive of their plagues. It's pretty serious now. There's no time to go on vacation or R&R. &R. This is war. Every day it's a battle. And we are tested and tried as we are tempted and in afflictions. But think it not strange the affliction that you have. We have brothers and sisters going through the same things in different ways, in different strengths, so that they may be tried as gold, so that when Jesus returns, they can, we can appear without shame and be clothed in the robe of righteousness and not be naked, miserable, blind. God help us. God help me. God help you.